Learning Leadership Rediscovered, a podcast devoted to all things leadership. I'm Laura Siebold, founder and president of Shine Consulting. In every episode, I interview different leaders from different industries and different walks of life to learn about their unique definition of leadership. And today is a very special celebratory episode. I'm excited to have Lauren Kyle here Hi. with us from Sugar Bar, amongst many other businesses that you own, co-own, operate. So, and we're going to get into that. Yeah. But it, we're also celebrating the yeah. podcast 100th episode. Yeah. Congrats. Thank That's so you. exciting. I'm excited to have you here and just talk all about everything. I mean, we've already had a great conversation that you know, won't yeah. make it into the episode, but that's okay. <laughs> or it will. Or the bloopers. <laughs> yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> but I always like to start just by asking people to take us through their leadership journey, their story, whatever. Yeah. Just tell us about you for individuals that don't know you. Um, so I'm Lauren Kyle. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm from Fairmont, Morgantown. Okay. My dad, he was in the Air Force, so we traveled a lot growing oh, wow. up, um, which was really cool. Um, yeah. And anyways, getting on to the leadership stuff, I went to WVU for fashion and I didn't want to do anything with it whenever I graduated because yeah. I'm like, you have to go to New York, do something yes. with that. So I'd always done like serving and bartending jobs. Oh, cool. um, so I met my husband doing that and he had a sports bar that I had already been working for. Um, so it kind of just, we just grew with the company. Yeah. Um, I started moving up into management positions because of that. I've always kind of been a people person. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that goes along with my leadership is kind of, you know, not necessarily people pleasing, but- Yeah, um, but like wanting to make serving people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So cool. um, yeah, and then eventually we opened some other restaurants. We have a whole hospitality company now, Harma <sighs> Hospitality. That's and so cool. While doing all of that, um, I found that I love to bake, and he and I decided to open a coffee shop, bakery, sugar bar, um, and that one is kind of on my own, and Bron, you know, he's there to help, yeah. and he's kind of in the background. But that's like your thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where I went with all of my leadership. Very cool. And you made yeah. this amazing <gasps> cake, which Thanks. we'll talk more about later, but I am just, just want to, you know, really extra emphasis on the cake, because yeah. I'm all about cake. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so at that, okay, so you had already been in roles of management before you opened up your own business. Yes. But that's like a whole thing too. Yeah. Because you're having to hire staff. You're uh -huh. having to set. All the rules and yeah. like expectations of everyone. Like yeah. managing, you know, usually you already have rules that someone else has put into place. Yes. Um, and I, opening your own business, you know, you have the background from whenever you're managing. Yeah. But it's completely different than, yeah. you know, directing all these people. And it's different. You know, we have all the restaurants, yeah. but a bakery was completely different than anything that I was used to. Yeah. Um, it's really nice, but yeah, it is a lot trying yeah. to transition into that and taking whatever I've learned managing and mm -hmm. putting it into the role of owning the business and managing all the people underneath. You know, yeah. usually you have someone above you telling right. you what to do, which right. is And nice. then you have to boss yourself. Yeah. I find that very challenging. It is difficult. <laughs> yes. It is so There's difficult. There's no one there to be like, Laura, did you uh -huh. do what you were supposed to do today? Yes. It's like, yes. Yeah. You yes, can set self. yourself deadlines, but then you're like, oh, mm. do I really have to? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you do. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And so as you went, as you started out, were you kind of like, okay, I'm going to set this up to be a very certain way based on all the things that I had learned? Or did it just evolve more naturally? It kind of just you? evolved more naturally. Um, yeah. I'm pretty lucky a lot, not a lot, but some of the people that started out with us whenever we opened the shop are still there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they've had a lot of play into the business too. Yeah. Um, and that has been really helpful. It's, you know, Harma, we're kind of put your employees first and, yes. you know, take care of your customers too. But if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. Bingo. Um, and we really try to live all of the businesses through that. And I feel like it shows in just, you know, the few people that have been with me there and yeah. a lot of the people that have been with us at our other locations, they've played such an important role yeah. in figuring everything out. Cause yeah. you know, you can work for someone else, you can do all these things, but until you actually own your own business or in that position, there's mm -hmm. so much that you just don't know. Exactly. And you're yeah. learning it on the fly. Uh -huh. And a lot yeah. of it is mistakes, honestly, yeah. just, oops, 
mess that up uh-huh. and try again differently. Yeah. But I think it's cool that you've had people stay with you. And I know Harma is a hospitality business, which is always interesting to me because I feel like a lot of times an, a, a business that's customer focused yeah. and is thinking about hospitality, they'll, they'll focus so much on applying those principles to customers, but not consider you can actually apply all those principles to your employees yeah. too. And if you take really, really good care of your employees, like you said, they're yeah. going to take really good care of the customers. So um, I would love to hear, even if you have any tips for people that this is not intuitive to and they yeah. don't understand how to do it, just things that you've done uh-huh. or ways that you take care of your people or put them first just to kind of share with the broader audience yeah. of some examples. So we try to recognize the employees. Yeah. Um, you know, birthdays, obviously a lot of places recognize birthdays and whatnot, yeah. but I feel like accomplishments. And, mm. you know, when you're a leader, you're told to focus on strengths and weaknesses and try to fix the weaknesses. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, I'm actually taking a leadership course right now, and we kind of um, also already focus on this, but you want to focus on their strengths and yes. trying to build them up. Because yeah. if you just focus on the weaknesses, you know, you're missing out on where that person is really excelling, and they could – really build your company up Mm -hmm. and so just kind of focusing on the employees putting them first um trying to see you know a lot of times people need days off trying our best to do that and like we're pretty successful at giving people time off but just reaching out to them and seeing what they need and treating them like humans um we get a lot of employees that come from other places and not to bash other places of course but um they just tell me about their experiences and they're so shocked at how they're treated working for us. And like, you know, we take the time to talk to them. If there's something wrong, you want to talk to them. If there's a family emergency, you know, yeah. you want to know. I mean, not that I ask them exactly what's going on, but they feel comfortable enough to yeah. tell me what's going on. So I feel like that speaks volumes, too. And just like Absolutely. they're humans, you yeah, know, humans. they yeah. obviously they need a job. So that's mm-hmm. kind of why they're there. But they turn <laughs> into family, too. And like yeah. during holidays, this is something big we'll do. We always invite, you know, if they can't go home because they live too far, Aww. they don't have someone. Mm-hmm. We always invite them to our home to. Mm-hmm come and be with us so they could at least have like that family so we really try to make people feel like they're part of something yes and part of a family yeah well and I know because I'm a customer of many of your businesses (laughs) that you'll even shut down Uh a day maybe close a restaurant or close wherever to say hey we're doing an employee activity we're taking all of our employees to top golf or wherever it may be which I think is really cool and I actually think is is a huge statement, especially for any profit-based company. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're giving up a day of income uh-huh. to do something like that, and you're spending money to take your employees somewhere. And so there are, I think, a lot of businesses that would be like, yeah. oh, we can't afford that. Uh-huh. And I, if you're willing to maybe even just talk a little bit about that, too, yeah. because I think that's a really creative and really cool practice. Yeah, so we – That kind of goes along with the family thing. And, you know, people, it does suck, you Mm -hmm. know, closing down for one day. And it doesn't suck spending the money on them, though, because, you know, your people matter. And it's like you get a – they all get to work with each other. And I feel like you have your work family and work friends that you're around. But they don't really get to hang out with each other, excuse me, outside of work. So it really creates connections amongst them. And then, you know, they care more about each other at work and, like, helping out with, you know, picking up shifts. And they create an environment that is positive for them. And, you know, it shows that we care, which we do care a yeah. lot about them. Um, and we try to go to the events too, if we're able to. Um, yeah. I just think that putting them first and trying to do those things has just completely changed the culture and the work culture. That's um, amazing. Yeah. It's created really good friendships yeah. and just a positive environment. Well, and I think when you put employees first, they have a tendency to repay that back yeah. in terms of not just approaching it like this is just a job and I don't really care yeah. and I'm just going to check the box or do the bare minimum. But it's like, you know what? They actually care about me. If I know someone cares yep. about me, I'll <clears throat> run through a brick wall for them. Yeah. And so I think it does matter to say, okay, it, to, to take the effort and, and the cost really to yeah. demonstrate, hey, I care about you and you matter to me. And it's like, okay, well, if I matter to you, then guess what? You matter to me yeah. as well. Yeah, they care more and about like, the job and the people there and you and just – 
your values become their values. Yeah. Yeah. How would they describe you as a leader and what um, your leadership style is? Kind. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, leadership style. I don't know all the different leaderships. Yeah. Um, but I feel like compassionate and empathetic. The yeah. amount of, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. No, of and course. I'm, I'm very much like, yeah. tell us about you yeah. and your great strengths. <laughs> uh -huh. and you're like, oh great. man. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I hear from them all the time. Like, I've never had a boss that asked me this or checked in after I, you know, had some surgery or something going on or a test or, you know, I had someone that uh, she was really stressed about something. So I took the time to sit and talk to her. And I just feel like compassion and empathetic yes. would probably be the first thing that they would think of. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope. I don't know. Right. I could be wrong. You might go there and ask them and they're like, no, that's <laughs> not try. it. Next yeah. time I go in there. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> don't put that on the podcast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take really your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't So what what are different leadership styles? Well, honestly, no, you did describe it well okay. because you will have people and a lot of it's personality based, yeah. honestly. So it's so interesting because I can totally see that in you. You are a caring person. I you do want to make people happy. Yeah. And so I think that shines through just in your your attitude, your personality, your demeanor. But Thanks. yeah, it's 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 very specific usually to how someone's personality shows up and what they prioritize. And there are, yeah. there are people who prioritize results. And so their, their focus is all about, I'm going to focus on the task. Yeah. And I'm gonna, you got to get this project done or you got to hit this deadline, you know, and I'm not saying that's bad. No. I'm just, that's a style. Yeah. And then you have other people that are a little bit more oriented towards, Hey, let's take care of the person. Uh -huh. Let's make sure that, we are learning about them, being empathetic and compassionate towards them yeah. and, you know, trying to keep them engaged and because mm -hmm. you want them to come back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like or customers. Keep them. <laughs> you want your customers to come back. Yeah. Right. And so it's the same thing with employees. We uh -huh. want them to show up uh, when their shift is. Yeah. Or we, wanna we want them to come back to work tomorrow. So what are the things that we need to do to get them to keep coming back? Yeah. And it's amazing to me, especially in the corporate world, how much when you talk about the importance of caring. And when you talk about empathy is actually, they're saying is like the number one leadership trait right now that, oh, that companies are trying to teach. Wait, that's wonderful. Yeah. In fact, Feel better. Walmart is running all of their, they're running all their managers through compassion training. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I know because it's just not always prioritized yeah. in the workplace. I feel like the workplace is changing too. And like the culture, everyone yes. will talk about that. There's pros and cons to that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you have to evolve. That's yes. and I feel like the workforce hasn't really evolved over the years and yeah. people are really focused on not themselves, but just their time yeah. and what they're doing with their time and valuing it. And they want to feel valued yes. too. So that makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. I know. So good on you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. We'll celebrate you with a yeah. cake. <laughs> Here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, kind of going along with that question, but how, what would you say your leader, your definition of leadership is in general, if someone. So I wrote this down before I love it. coming here, but I don't remember it. Now. That's okay. Um, I would say that my defini definition of leadership would be not just leading a team, but an actual mm -hmm. individual. Like, I want them to grow with the team yeah. and the company, but also as a person. Yeah. Um, I want them to be positively impacted by whatever leadership I'm doing so that yeah. in life, you know, they can do better in life and yes. they can grow and they can excel. And I feel like a lot of times people are just put down for so many things and mm. they're not showed the positives. Yeah. And like, they're also, it's not done in a way, even with the negatives where it's to help them grow. It's just to put yeah. them down in what they're doing. And I really want something that we really want in the company is like, you know, we want them to grow with us as yes. the company. Um, cause it's hard to find good people. So when you find it good is, people, and especially in your industry, yeah, it is very it's difficult. A, a high turnover. Industry, uh -huh. right? And it, with it being a college town, there's so oh, many people yeah. that they come to college and then they stay and then, you know, they move after that and get a job in whatever degree. But that's the other thing we want them, you know, if you're not going to stay and grow within our company, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to move or, you know, move on to something else. I want them to be positively affected from that. I want that next employer to be like, wow, where did they work before yes. here? You know, they have such a good work ethic. Um, and just 
them as a human growing too. Because, yeah. you know, you're not taught that. That's something that like no. as an adult and after you have kids, mm-hmm. you start like realizing, hmm, I was not taught how to handle these emotions <laughs> right. or this or that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're going through this journey of yourself and I just want people to be more open to that and be able to help themselves grow and like just positively impact yeah. them in their lives. Aww, that's awesome. Yeah. I like that you're doing that. Not to like go back to something you said earlier, but yeah. um, I really like the focus on the strengths too. Yeah. Um, I'm actually certified in Clifton Strengths, which is a, an assessment that people can use among other assessments, but just to kind of identify what their strengths are. And uh-huh. that's the the whole science behind that is instead of focusing on what's wrong with somebody, let's focus on what's right with them. Because yeah. I can try really, really hard to be something that I'm not. Yep. And I'm only ever going to be like, mm. Yeah. At doing that, right? <clears throat> Versus taking something I'm already really, really good at yeah. and trying to get even better at that. That's uh-huh. where you're going to get the highest levels I of agree. performance. I read Not something like about trying to turn someone into some something they can really yeah, be. Yeah, that's what you can. It's like um, school for kids. Yeah, you always focus on if they got an F or D, which obviously yeah. they still need to get that up. Sure. But yeah, you know, I read something where it's like um, you get a tutor for mm-hmm. them in that instead of yes. getting a tutor for something that they're getting an A in because they're already excelling, but they yeah. obviously excel in that for a reason. So right. the focus should be put on that, Yeah, you know, while trying to grow the weaknesses a little bit too. But yeah, yeah. that's cool. I think it's also interesting that <clears throat> you've had you've been able to keep people with you for a long time again Uh considering how high the turnover is considering that we're in a college town there and and they're what i think is also helpful to recognize for people is that this is a career yeah it's it's not something that you just have to do while you're in college Uh to you know pay the bills like this is a this is a legitimate career that you can make a really great life yeah from that's what one of the girls Paige. she's been with us I don't know if you've ever met Paige, but she's our director maybe. of operations. Okay. She she's wonderful. And is she at Cosmo a lot? She is there. Okay. Yeah. She kind of goes in between Cosmo, Crab Shack, and Dockside. Okay. I feel like she was more recently at Cosmo. Yeah. Um, but she's been with us, I'm gonna at least eight or nine years, I wow. think. And that's amazing. <clears throat> her birthday was yesterday, actually. Aww. Happy so, birthday, Paige. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> um But, you know, I was texting her and talking to her, telling her happy birthday. But it's just like watching her grow, you know, not just with the company, but her as a human. And it's just great. But, Mm -hmm. you know, having those people just to they really change you, too. So like her, she's been with us for so long and she's also helped us grow as a company and as people. She's one of my good friends, I always say. And I'm very thankful for her. But um yeah, I don't know where I was going with all that. That's all right. It was good. Got, though. I yeah, really it was good. It. That's why I wish I didn't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to two people who <laughs> lose their train of thought talking yep. together. <laughs> yep. We'll get back. It'll be like ten minutes. It'll I'll be come like, back. oh, here it's it is. Boomerang. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But you know, it's interesting when you think about Paige as an example and think about those individuals that have been with you for a while, and you're talking about how you watch her grow yeah. as a leader. I always think it's interesting. We don't do a great job of teaching people how to lead in the yeah. first place or how to manage yes. people. And so I'd love to hear any learnings that you've had just throughout the years of if you compare to maybe the first time you ever managed a team of people to where you are now, maybe some things that you've learned or things that you wish you could go back and tell yeah. your younger self. So the kind and niceness. I'm mm-hmm. a people pleaser, mm-hmm. which I'm working on. Like I said, I'm doing that leadership course to yeah. try to help um So many times over the years, you know, you let people walk all over you and you try to justify that and you think that you're being nice about certain things, but in turn, you're kind of hurting yourself and, you know, the rest of the people. That is Mm -hmm. something which, you know, I'm working on now and I feel like that's changed. Um, That's probably my biggest thing that I wish that I could change from the past is just trying to please everyone because you can't. You You can't please everyone. You know, you have to. And also pleasing them is also not helping them either. No. That's something that I'm like, you know, withholding something that someone is doing wrong and yes. not telling them. If you don't give them that information, you're hurting yourself, your company, and you're also hindering them and their growth because they yeah. might not be aware of it. And if they are aware of it and they don't change it, then mm-hmm. obviously that's on them as well. But that's so true. That's actually what helped me because I struggled with that too. I still do. Yeah. Like, mm, let me be clear. <laughs> I, I used to say I'm a reformed people pleaser and I'm like, maybe I actually am not actually reformed. reformed. <laughs> 
Maybe I just still am. Although I would argue that there are some benefits to being. Yes. I mean, if you think about being in a service industry, uh-huh. I do think it just helps you to be more wired. Yeah. To, I mean, I do want to make people happy, and I don't think that's a bad thing. No, I, I like want to make someone's day better. Like that that's gives not you terrible. happiness inside too, and yeah. it kind of keeps you it's going. It's a very rewarding thing. Uh-huh. But you're right. If it goes too far, yes. When you're in a leadership role, it can be hard to make because you do have to make tough decisions yes. sometimes. And especially as you get bigger groups of people, then it's like, well, I literally cannot make everyone happy with mm-hmm. this decision. But the feedback thing was always hard for yeah. me as a yes. leader because I didn't want to hurt someone's feelings uh-huh. or I just don't really enjoy talking about negative stuff anyway yeah. in general. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to you know, be a total downer and tell uh-huh. them they're not good at this. And also, I feel like I make a lot of mistakes and yes. I'm not perfect. So yep. who am I to Judge tell someone them. else? Yeah, Yeah, like, "Mm, you could have done a little better here. And then they could have been like, well, you could have done better over Uh here, Laura. You know, so for all those reasons, I really struggled with it. But I used to and still do teach feedback training. So I'm like, well, oh, that's I better nice. get good at this because <laughs> you're like, oh no. It's like do as they say, not as I do, right? Uh-huh. I actually have to practice what I preach. And I think what finally helped me get there is that if I truly care about yes. someone then giving them that feedback if it's going to be helpful if they're if they really do have something that they're doing that's going to get in their way uh-huh. of being successful then if i really do care about them sharing that feedback is what i have to do yeah. in order to help them and and i think if you do a good job of building trust with your team and getting to know them they'll know it's coming from a good place yeah. that okay she's not doing this because she wants to hurt me uh-huh. or hurt my feelings or ruin my day, but she is someone who cares and, and therefore she's doing it. It's coming from a good place. Yeah. So that's kind of how I had to finally ch- reframe it in my own head to get more comfortable because it is hard. I, mean, I still is. don't like to have those yeah. conversations. No. But this course that I'm taking, it talks about, I'm still taking it. So yeah. I'm not, still I don't learning. remember exactly yeah. what it is, but it's like, you don't really go into it as whatever, as a negative. Yes. It, there's not really a negative. It's just something like that you can grow from. Yeah. So it's all kind of positives. It's just changing the way that you're looking at it yeah. and handling it. Thinking differently about yeah. something. And I think most people, at least people I know, want to get better. I yes. know I want to get better. Yep. And we all have – somebody called something out to me the other day. They're like, um, I was watching you and, and you do this. And I was like – didn't know and yeah I mean I know myself pretty well at this point in life and they still brought something to my attention that I was like I had no idea so I mean we all have blind spots we Uh all have things that we do that we're not aware of and it's not like I'm walking around trying to screw up every day so it is helpful when someone's like oh by the way did you know you do this and it's fine if you want to keep doing that but also maybe here's a better way yeah that you can try something else like all right and then taking that and if you're aware of something and you choose not to change it, mm-hmm. I feel like that's where you're not growing. Yes. Unless it's something good that yes. they're telling you. You know, I'm not sure what it was. But if you yes. are aware of something and you don't change what you're doing, then you're really yeah. – you're not growing and you're not doing good for you're yourself. You're making that choice. Yeah. Yes. And then it's on you from there. Yeah. What else have you learned from your leadership class? <laughs> Tell us. A lot. <laughs> He's great. We've only done it for – three weeks now. Very cool. I had to miss one week, but, and yeah. it's a lot of information. Is it's it like, virtual or is it in person? No. Or? Um, it's in person once a week. Very it's cool. with my friend Grant Stewart. He has like oh, a professional okay. development. Very cool. Yeah. And it's, we meet like four hours a week, but you have a lot of homework. Oh, which that's a lot. Yeah, it is, but it's nice. Yeah. And you just realize so much, a lot of everything's based on like feelings, you know, and yes. the way you feel when things are happening and yes. occurring and the only way you can really change that is to change the way that you feel and see things as yeah. they're going on. It's so interesting that you say that because that is also, you you mentioned this earlier, like they don't really teach us that in yeah. school. We don't really talk about that a lot in school. And now finally, I'm there's, I was just listening to a podcast the other day. There's a woman named Susan David and she does, um, I think she wrote a book called, I think it's called Emotional Agility, but Ooh. she's excellent. I might have she to has get a really that. cool accent. I think she's South African and just listening to her is yeah. cool, especially 
if you do audiobooks or listen to uh-huh. her podcast. But she talks a lot about like feelings aren't good or bad. Yeah. Feelings are just feelings. But we have to understand. She always calls them signposts. So she says they are signposting our values and the yes. things that we need. Yes. And if we just ignore them, you know that that impacts our behavior. It impacts our decisions. So she's like, it's not about saying like this is right or wrong. Or even you mentioned kids earlier. Yeah. I mean, I think about like. I feel like in some ways I was raised that anger was not an acceptable yep. emotion, right? Yeah. So it's just it's like, mm, we're not going to be angry. Yeah. It's like, okay. But like, actually, if you think about a lot of big changes that happen, positive changes, uh-huh. a lot of times they stem from anger. Yes. Like someone's mad about something. Like, this isn't right. You yeah. know, if you think about justice for something, it's usually because we're angry. They're uh-huh. like, hey, this, is, this was – someone was – treated unfairly yeah. or um I don't I don't like this company I work for and I'm going to start my own or yeah. whatever the case may be but like oftentimes those things come a little bit out of anger originally and uh-huh. then it's like oh now I'm going to take action on it yeah so an emotion that maybe some people think is bad can actually be used in a really positive way to yeah. make positive change and so it's not about this is a good feeling or a bad feeling or you should only feel this or that but like first of all just be aware yes that a feeling is happening uh-huh. and then and recognize, yeah. yeah, and and also know that it is going to impact your behavior. Yeah. We are not robots. Yeah. <laughs> like we, yeah. And we I make like very emotional decisions all day long. Uh-huh. And a lot of times we're not even thinking Aware about of it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, ah. Yeah. Why do I do this? <laughs> well, it's because you have feelings yes. towards it, you know? Yeah. And so I think it's cool that there's more that people are starting to talk about it more because uh-huh. it definitely was not. I mean, we, no. did, we did our, yeah. you know, math and science and checked all those boxes, which is not that that's not important. Mm-hmm. But things like emotions and feelings, things like leadership yeah. um, aren't – haven't historically been talked about a, a lot or taught in schools. And I think now we're starting to see some change with that, which yeah, is good. Yeah, it is. Something else that he's talked about – you know, a lot of people think that they're born leaders. You yes. know, people talk about that all the time, and that's not how it is. You were conditioned uh, yeah. to think and be how you were just based on your surroundings yeah. and the way that you take everything in. And it's like anyone can be a leader. Absolutely. It just takes figuring out your values and your mm-hmm. beliefs and ethics and everything behind it and then figuring out how to, like, back that. So it's just like yeah. how Walmart is changing and yeah. they're becoming more empathetic. They've just – always tried to have their leadership and stuff done a certain Mm -hmm. way. And it's like, people aren't like that anymore. So it's not going to work. You can't force someone to be a certain way. Exactly. It's like the best Dr. Phil saying ever, like, how's that working out for you? Right. (laughs) I haven't watched him in years. I, so he is still like, he has his own network now. He is, I think Dr. Phil's having, not that he, was away but like he's he's in this, back like, yeah he's in this like comeback era i have to go know. watch dr yeah. phil after oh, this he's got a podcast he's got all kinds of stuff but like i always him. liked his saying of like yeah. how's that working for you you know because uh-huh. if we talked about behavior earlier and whether someone gives you feedback and then you choose whether you want to change or not yeah. I mean, that's on you but it's like if i went up to someone and said hey are you aware that you do these things and you're like, yep. And then I say, and how's that working for you? You know, and you yeah. might be like, actually, not so great. Yeah. <laughs> are that you are great. you really happy or do you, are you successful? Are you achieving all the goals that you want to achieve? And yeah. you're like, actually, no. no. Hmm. So maybe I should do <laughs> maybe something. Maybe we should do something differently. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good saying. I'm going to have to start yeah. saying that. How's that working out for you? Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. If Lauren says Start asking my kids. Anyone, yeah. That's. Yeah. <laughs> you hit your brother. How's that working out for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I am going to have to use Thanks, that. Dr. Phil. Yep. We're going to sit, me and my kids are going to sit and watch Dr. Phil together. Oh, my six and eight year old. There you, you know. go. We'll see how they take that. I have to pre-screen the episode. So Benny That's got, true. Talks about some pretty heavy stuff. All right. Well, maybe not with them. I'll just ask them how it's working yeah. for them. See how it goes. So I do want to switch gears because, um, again, celebration is a big, big part of our episode today Uh um and when I think about you're talking about being conditioned and you know just our home life the things that we're taught in childhood what I think is so interesting is when I think about celebrations 
I ca- I come from a family that celebrated yeah. a lot. And then, so I just assumed everyone celebrates a lot and then come to find out, no, no. Like, <laughs> not all families are big on celebration, uh-huh. but we were. And so I think it's interesting though, especially in the working world yeah. and, and as you think about the types of celebrations that usually happen, it's often much more personal, I think, in nature, you know, celebrating yeah. some kind of milestones, the birth of a baby, a wedding, um, Um, birthdays, anniversaries, all of that. But then even in the workplace, you mentioned it earlier, a lot of times we were still just celebrating the personal stuff, which is good. We should do that. Uh Don't, nobody stop doing that. Uh, (laughs) Please don't stop doing that. But what I think is interesting is even in the workplace, a lot of our celebrations are more around someone's birthday or Mm -hmm. someone's work anniversary or, um, a significant milestone in their personal life, but I don't, I have a belief that we don't celebrate enough around just accomplishing important things at work. So we've been working on a project together for two years and then the project ends, we get it done, we check the box and we just kind of like move Move on on to the next project. And it's, and, and oftentimes there's no acknowledgement Uh or, celebration of like we did it and I know people are probably like okay what are we supposed to celebrate everyone coming to work every day I'm not saying (laughs) that that. (laughs) but I'm just (laughs) saying that like especially high achieving people high performing people I do feel like many of those individuals and and the organizations they work in it's literally just like all right well you check that box that's what was expected of you so now let's move on and there's this lack of acknowledgement or celebration of success so I just kind of wanted to get your take on what do you think what do you see and and as it relates to that no I agree it's funny because my husband and I Braun, he is you know we're both always growing and changing our leadership styles and trying to improve and everything and he's been a huge part of my leadership and growing um but I'm always like the words of affirmation type person where you tell me good things and you know I get all giddy and happy yeah but people like that like if you tell them good things that they're doing or you just recognize something it could be small it might not even be accomplishing something but if you're like hey you know, those cupcakes, you made them and they came out perfect. Yeah. Um, you did a really good job. That yeah. just, you know, reaffirms to them that they did a good job for that. And Absolutely. anyone, no one doesn't like hearing that they're doing a good job I or agree. what they're doing. People good might at. say, yes, it's not true. No. We all like to feel like we're doing a yes. good job. And yeah. We're wanted wherever it is that we work. Uh huh. And I do think that celebrating that stuff and accomplishments is so important. Like, you know, someone that works for you, if they graduate, you know, and get their degree, that's huge. And it's awesome. And like, even at work, like you're talking about, um, projects. So this girl, Brittany, that works for me, she's been a huge part of my business. Um, she's wonderful. And so I did macarons whenever we first open and, um, you know, I just got caught up doing so many other things. And macarons are like the trickiest little I was going to say, I'm not a baker, hoops. but I've tried. They're not easy. Yeah, to no. Make. They're so <laughs> finicky. Literally, it could be raining and they're not going to turn out. They're going to be different than last. You know, anything can change them. Yeah. It's crazy. And so we started having some issues with the almond flour, which where we got it from, they had to have changed something and it just wasn't oh. turning out. So eventually we stopped because we had so many that just weren't turning out. Well, she loved doing macarons and huh. she loved baking. So she took the recipe and she just like like kept working and she's figured them out and you know it is a huge accomplishment and you know she really pushed herself to get there and I think the environment that she's in and allowing her to do that also helped but like it I do think that recognizing stuff like that and celebrating that is huge yeah yeah so I would love to hear any tips or ideas you have on good ways to celebrate people at work and maybe even some creative things I know I'm really putting you on the spot but (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's okay (laughs) creative ideas or maybe things you've been a part of like I for example I came to you and was like hey will you make a cake yeah to celebrate Your our 100th, 100th episode, episode which is huge so, yeah like any creative things that you've heard or that you've participated in or you've done yourself just to celebrate success um I feel like I've gotten things for people before whenever they've done certain things yeah. and made a certain accomplishment um it could be anything from like a gift card somewhere yeah. or just, I don't know, I've done massages for people before, but just like, nice. yeah, I don't know. Recognizing stuff like that. But it's funny that you mentioned this because Sugar Bar has been open for almost three years now in June and we mm-hmm. never did our one year <gasps> anniversary. And every year that comes, I'm like, 
oh man, you know, but uh-huh. life is just so busy and it you never get to. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of putting thoughts in my head and I'm like, yes. this is, yeah, it's good. Yeah. You know, you should celebrate those things. And like, nothing's going to be perfect. I'm like the type where it's hard sometimes because you want something to be perfect and it's just never going to get there. So I've had to let go of certain things sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, you're like, oh, well, I want to plan this and I want to do this for this and yeah. I want to do this and that and yada, yada, yada. And, and only until all these things happen yeah. can I yes. celebrate. And or... it never is going to get there. No. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to get there. So maybe That's we'll a really do a three point. year. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally, you totally should. But it's true. And I do think maybe that is why, because I'm always curious why people don't celebrate more. And maybe that is one of the reasons. Is yeah. like, well, I don't really like to celebrate. Does that mean that you've officially arrived or that you're done? Like yeah. it's like an ending of something. And it and to me it's more about I think a lot of times when you celebrate, it's it's an opportunity to just pause yes. for a minute and just reflect. So like an anno- is- well, uh, business anniversary is a great example because yeah. you could say, gosh, we've been open for three years. Like, yeah. let's think back. You opened during the pandemic, uh-huh. right? Which was, oh, it was I'm sure, stressful. Right after. But <laughs> okay. It was stressful. It was still but stressful. But all your construction and all of that yeah. was still during. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that was kind of a crazy time. So, like, you, it gives you an opportunity to reflect back of, like, oh, my goodness, uh-huh. you know. Th- look at where we started yeah. to where we are. And I do think that's helpful also because we're just wired to always focus on what's now, wrong or what needs yes. to get better and yeah what's like look forward look forward look uh-huh. forward but we sometimes don't recognize look how far we've come yeah. so maybe it's the business isn't where we want it to be this month or maybe this year has been just like ugh, you know things, yeah. it's been a harder year than maybe last year was for whatever reason um but gosh like look it's not all been bad. Yeah. Look at the things that we have accomplished in the past three years or look at the things that we have done. I, I love that. I think it's that. important yeah, to I do too. reflect a little bit. Uh-huh. And I think celebrating gives you an opportunity to do I that agree. because you're just kind of marking that. And yeah. it doesn't mean, like I said, you can never celebrate again. Like, yeah. You can celebrate as much as you want because uh-huh. it is an accomplishment. Uh-huh. Owning your own business is not easy. No. <laughs> and the restaurant as well uh, restaurant business as well i mean i know they have high failure rates typically so i mean anything in in that industry hospitality is just we talked about with staffing and there's a lot of challenges um so to be able to say hey not only did we open which is a big deal but we've kept going and look at the things that we're doing and the progress we're making yeah it's just kind of a neat way to just pause it is and I do feel like it needs focused on that more because like yeah you even said earlier what was it something about leadership um you were judging yourself you're telling someone you're like oh well you're doing this wrong and then you're like but I'm doing this wrong you know you're only thinking about that and it's like we shouldn't be focusing on that stuff and growing and just changing things and looking back at that Mm -hmm. it's huge I feel like I just rambled my thoughts went that was good okay Um, and it's funny because I was going to ask you but I kind of like already have my own answer that I want to hear you say for this question (laughs) but I can't wait to hear this (laughs) I'm like hoping you'll answer it the way I think you might but like what do you think uh is another on the spot question but what do you think are the the successful components of a good celebration People. Yes. I feel like people that you want to be there. Because you think about weddings. I do a lot of weddings. And these people are stressed. They're stressed. Because you're planning a wedding for everyone else, not for you and what you want. I mean, I went through it. My husband and I, we love, you know, it was great. We did everything and it was great. Um, But it's still so stressful. And I hear all these people say, well, this person wants this and this person wants that. And I have to wear that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, this is supposed to be a celebration and it's supposed to be something that's happy and good. And, you know, there's a lot of people I feel like going and getting eloped now. They're having elopements instead of having the full blown wedding because then they just, they they can go on honeymoon and enjoy it. They can have a small little party Mm -hmm. reception with each other after. And I mean, there's still a lot of weddings happening. Trust me, because I have a lot of weddings. But, um, it just makes you think, like, for the celebrating, like, 
I think that the main thing that you need to celebrate is just people yeah. and a cake. Yeah, I mean, on yeah. you can buy some desserts <laughs> <laughs> and food. Yeah, that was gonna be my like. How important is food and beverage? Because to me, <laughs> yeah. it's really important. Yeah, I'm gonna say good food. You know, <laughs> good food. Yep. Yeah, but you're right, and and I love that you said and people that you like and people yes. that you want to be there. Yeah, because people <laughs> invite all these people to the wedding that they. Yes. I don't want to say they don't care about them, but no. it's not like their top priority, and they, they just feel know like they. That. Them. Yes, it's and like, they feel obligated. Yes, like a classic scenario would be my parents are paying for yes. it, and therefore I have to invite all of their friends or their people that they want, and it might be people that you don't even know. Yeah, yeah. And then you like you can't invite someone else maybe that you wanted to because yeah. if you have so much space or I don't know. There are so many people though that just they have to do these things that they don't want to do for, or I mean, invite mm -hmm. people that they might not necessarily want to be there, or it's just, they don't want that many people, yeah. you know? Maybe they're like, I just want these core people, but they feel obligated because they're like, oh, well, they invited me to their wedding. That's a big one, I feel like, for people yes. too. Yes, and to be in the wedding yes. too. Like if you were in the yes. wedding party and then now you're like, oh, uh -huh. it's not my wedding party, so I got to add them to my wedding party. Yeah. It's a lot. It is. And it becomes not about what you're actually celebrating yeah. in the first place. Yeah, being in love and being together and spending your life together. Mm -hmm. I feel like having people that you truly care about there mm -hmm. for that is what matters. Yeah. And good food. Yeah. Good food. Yeah. Good drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the essential components. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you When you mentioned you do a lot of weddings, it did make me think about what are the other things that you do a lot of um, – cakes or I mean I know you obviously you do like all kinds of pastry and yeah. desserts but any any events that you maybe you notice you do more of like this type of a celebration versus that I feel like birthdays obviously yeah lots and lots of birthdays we get a lot of people that um order cakes for their work like celebrating someone's cool. birthday at work get yeah it. which Good. I think Good your job people yeah. keep doing that there's this one lady I love her I don't even I think I've met her in person one time she sends an email and oh. tells me what cake and then you know it's within like a week that she's wanting it and we yeah. do it every, all the time oh. and it's just so sweet because you know they're all thinking about each other and wanting to celebrate each other and That's I don't even cool. know if it's birthdays because I don't write on it I'm just assuming it's birthdays it could be maybe they're celebrating accomplishing goals you know I hope so yeah I hope so or too maybe they just like cake and I like that too <laughs> that I hope maybe that's it too so then they just keep ordering because yeah. yeah um I would say birthdays a lot yeah yeah baby showers yeah bridal showers yeah. um we do a lot of catering too and like just with the different restaurants yes. and like graduation parties obviously are huge oh, yeah. right now and family reunions and school reunions. Oh, that's a big cool. one too. Yeah. That's cool. Uh -huh. I forgot about that. I know. I never really think about them either until they reach out to us. Yeah. yeah. You got me thinking now, but yeah, yeah, I like it. I just, you know, I think again, we do, I think a pretty good job or we try, most of us try to do a pretty good job of celebrating personal events, but yeah. just thinking more about how do we, how do we celebrate? It doesn't have to be throw a party every day, no. although I'm not opposed to <laughs> yeah. <that>. but <laughs> someone I was talking to, I'm not going to say her name, but she's so sweet. She's a customer of mine, but they look at, they celebrate everything. They have like, you know how there's like Chocolate Lovers Day, yes. Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Yes. They, say, they celebrate day. so many different days. I'm like, I've never even heard of that before. I love She's like, it. yeah, we make a party out of everything. That's and it's at her awesome. work. Yeah. At work. See, uh -huh. and I would imagine that that's kind of a cool place to work. Yeah. They probably really enjoy themselves. Uh -huh. that, to me, there's, again, the acknowledgement and more of like a ritual or a ceremony that oftentimes comes with celebrations yeah. too. But it's more of like, let's just acknowledge the accomplishment and the, and reflect and all of that. But then yeah. also it's just like, let's have work is not always easy. Yeah. I mean, it is work. And sometimes it is nice to just have an excuse, but you don't need an excuse, but yeah. just to have an opportunity to just, have fun together. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think sometimes no. people feel like we should be so serious all the time uh -huh. because we're here to work. Yeah. And yes, it is important but you can also have fun, yeah, too. Yeah, that's what those team outings. That's just, you yeah. know, like getting together and not having to be at work whenever you're hanging out and just getting to know each other yeah, and, and having fun. you learn fun. different things about people. Uh -huh. When you travel with someone, oh, my gosh, you learn so much about a person when you travel with them, too. Yeah. But any out-of-office environment, I think, is 
that's where the real connections happen. I agree. And then it does flow back into when I'm working side by side, which I'm sure in your in your businesses, I mean, you've got people who are working pretty close together. It can be very mm-hmm. high stress yeah. environment, right? Yeah. You know, a lot of times you're like, got to turn this around quick or yeah. something. I was going to say catches fire, like literally maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened. <laughs> literally does, yeah. Uh, not, you know, not just hypothetically, but um, – and so it can be stressful and maybe someone called off sick or yep. several people called off sick and you're trying to cover their shift and you've got angry customers. I mean, there can be a lot that's negative, but I think when you take the time to build those relationships and you learn about each other and you care about each other, yeah. then that does impact – Especially yeah. in those moments where I agree there's a fire real or yeah, I agree. Imaginary. It made me start thinking about customers mm-hmm. and we have some of the best customers ever. I'm you so have thankful very loyal for the customers. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all so wonderful. Like, I don't know, knock on wood, they're all so wonderful. But I think mm-hmm. something that a lot of employers don't do either is backing their employees. Like if there's a Ooh. customer who is not right. Yeah. The and customer is just, always right. We hear that saying uh-huh. all the time. Which, yeah. to an extent, you know, it is. Yeah. Um, but you know, so many people try to belittle mm-hmm. a lot of working people. And yes. they just think that they're so above them and they don't talk to them like they're humans. And I think backing your staff on that and, yeah. you know, not allowing that to happen, which obviously you can only do so much. But being there in those situations right. to try to help for it, you know, yeah. a lot of corporate, not just corporate places, but they'll just be like, no, the customer's right. Do this. Do yeah. that. Yeah. You probably did something for them to talk like that. And it's like, no, there's some people where they'll just talk to you that way. And we've come to realize if that happens, usually that person's having a bad day, yeah. you know, and they're just looking to take it out and things Yeah, it usually up. probably has nothing to do yeah. with the actual person mm-hmm. or the situation that they're in. You just it's have just... the one thing that set them off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I do think that's important. I, I can't remember. I think I was traveling in Canada over the summer and I noticed that their airline, whatever airline I was passing by their gate, they had this huge sign that was like, we will not tolerate our gate agents being humiliated, awesome. um, verbally abused, uh, cursed at, you know, they had this whole list. I was like, I had a lot of thoughts because first of all, I'm like, how sad yeah, how does that it we get have there? to say that. Right? Yeah. Like, come on. This is about human decency. Uh-huh. But... I was also like, you know, I really, I I agree with you. I think a lot of times employers don't necessarily back their employees publicly. Mm -hmm. um, And that's important too. Yeah. To know that I, you care about me as a human. And even if I do make a mistake, you know, the customer isn't always right. Yeah. And and it's not okay for them to be abusive. I mean, they may be upset at how something happened, but that's not an excuse to yell and scream or throw things or whatever. And I think it matters to actually make a statement like that in some way. You don't have to put them aboard this big. But (laughs) they must have had to. That is sad. It was aggressive. There were a lot of them. So I was like, wow. I could not. The airlines, I feel bad for those people. I know. And then, I mean, and at the end of the day, it's like, come on. I mean, it makes, it does infuriate me sometimes when I hear stories about how inappropriate people act in situations. And it's like, you're there to... You're there to go on like, a plane and get yeah, somewhere. Like, just you're going on vacation. Like, yeah. don't, you know, and maybe like someone else is on, on the plane. They're going to a funeral. So yeah. Like, let's just yep. be nice and exactly. kind to other yeah. people. Yeah. Or that worker, you know, maybe yes. someone died that day and they still had to come into work. Yeah. Or maybe they're working a double shift. Yeah. They covered for someone else. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And they just get belittled. And I mean, not everyone is a kind worker either. Yes. You know, there are True. some situations yeah. where, but I just feel like. People lose the decency to speak to each other like they're humans often. Yeah, and I agree with you. being yeah. there for the staff is important. That's cool that yeah. they did that, though. Yeah. I There's know, somewhere here in that. town. It, I think it was Mon General. Oh. I see signs where it's like, you know, you're not going to talk to them like this. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it's about, like, violence and stuff, yeah. too. And I'm like, it's so sad I know. that they have to put these signs up. I but know. also, you know, at least they're not going to take – But you're setting the expectation, yeah. and you're just kind of reminding people of how to act. And yeah. I guess if people need reminded of that, then, okay, maybe, yeah. maybe they weren't taught how to act. So let's, I you know, agree. we'll do our job in teaching uh-huh. people how to act. Yeah. <laughs> 
Very good. I, I love how we, I knew we would go all over the place in this conversation. <laughs> so it did not disappoint from well, that good. perspective. But anything that you were hoping I would ask you or that we would get to talk about today that as I did my, you know, very mm. uh, erratic journey of questioning that I, I missed that. Probably who, <gasps> yeah, for leadership yeah, that I've who, looked into. Who has impacted or, or shaped your, your leadership? That made me think. Obviously, my husband, you know, we work yeah. together, yeah. which, which is that's a lot. That yeah, a lot. I don't feel like people, marriages would work as much in yeah. the restaurant industry yeah. if you didn't work together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, I mean, we work really well like that and we've grown so much and like we have our two kids. We've kind of grown up together doing yeah. that though. Yeah. Because you've been together a while. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's been nice, but he is always on this journey of, you know, just always becoming better Aww. and growing as a person and a business owner. And um, he's just wonderful. Yeah. He's great. Aww. Anyone I feel like that has ever met him, you know, they're impacted Big by heart. him. Yeah. And yeah. then I also, my um, my mom, my stepmom, my second mother, um, and my dad, you know, I feel like my kindness comes from my dad. Very cool. I, like, I'm very similar to him. Um, and he is just, like, such a calm kind human being mm. um and then you know my mom she is also like which is my stepmom you know yeah. she is like she's always looking to grow and lead people like she's always that person that's like well what positive happened today you know instead of focusing on the negative yeah. what podcast can you listen to to grow your mind mm. and I just remember she got a trip for my sister and I. She took us to Nimicolin for like a little weekend. Nice. And Celebration. Yeah. <laughs> and you I know like what it. she did? She was, she got us journals and Aww. she was like teaching us leadership things. That's what the point of the trip was. Like, yeah, we went and got massages. That was nice. Was of course. Good. Yes. Food was good. Always but like yeah. yeah, she just was like, Aww. okay, well, what are your goals? What's the, yeah. Wow. She has good her mom. own company now. Yeah. Nice. Which she's going through some stuff now. Um, and as a family, you know, we're That's all hard. there and it's, yeah. yeah. But she is just such an important and impactful human and she's just so wonderful. And she really has like, I feel like even for Braun, like him being around her and seeing stuff that she's done and vice versa, her to yeah. him and, you know, my dad and everyone, um, they have all been very beneficial and impactful on my development. That's amazing. Yeah. And I love that you shared personal examples because I I think it's important for people to recognize that we we have the ability to influence and impact anyone. That, yeah. That it could be a customer walking in our door, but in the home as well. Yeah. Our family, we have that's a huge leadership opportunity every uh -huh. day, which is, I mean, no pressure for all of us. Right. You know, parents. parents. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it really is um, a tremendous leadership opportunity and, and an opportunity just – there, anyone we interact with all day long, you don't have to have a certain title. You don't have to be a business owner to be yeah. a leader yes. or be a vice president to be a leader or have manager in your title to be a leader. Yeah. Anyone that you interact with all day long, if you can positively impact yes. them or positively influence them in some way, you have no idea what you could actually be doing for that person. Yeah. Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. I feel like there's a lot of people out there leading people and they just don't even know yes. because they're not in that leadership role and they exactly. don't think that they're a leader. But I, the whole positively impacting people, yeah. it's so strong. It is. And yeah. then when people see you, do, it spreads. It can yeah. be very contagious. So when people see you doing it, then they might start modeling it to, to other people. Yeah. Like if your team sees how you lead and they're like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe – We'll lead each other that way uh -huh. because peers lead each other too. Yeah, absolutely. And then it, it translates, of course, as we talked about earlier, to how you treat your customers and everybody else. Yeah. So there's a massive ripple effect. Again, no pressure, leaders. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a massive ripple effect. And if you're going to be impacting someone anyway, then, I mean, I think you should choose positive. But yes. you you get to decide. Everybody gets to decide whether uh -huh. you want to have a positive or a negative impact. But – how great yeah. to have a positive impact. I agree. And make other people happy. Mm -hmm. We've made me very happy today. Oh, 
Thanks. You <laughs> made me happy. I can't wait to dive into this cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you well, so that's, much. Your hundredth episode. That's huge. Aww. Like you, I'm glad Thank that you're you. celebrating yourself Thank and the you. business and everything. That's awesome. That's Thank huge. Thank you. Yeah. I and actually, I have to give a shout out to Justin, our producer, because he was the one that was like, "Hey, Laura, Aww. we're approaching 100 episodes." Like not sure if you want to do something. I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even really – I kind of paid attention to that, but kind of didn't. So shout out to Justin. He's yeah. Amazing. See, that's Nobody a good work environment him. and positive, you know. Exactly. And he's like, oh, we need to celebrate this. Yeah, we that's need awesome. to celebrate. So kudos to you, Justin. <laughs> I got the thumbs up, Justin. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, thanks for we having celebrate me. celebrate you. Yeah. And, and your you. role. Thank you yeah. in helping other people celebrate. Thanks for having and me. Absolutely. And just I hope everyone listening and watching can be inspired to go make other people happy like you make yeah. people happy. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. So okay. So, Lauren, are you game for the lightning round? I am. Okay, this is 60 seconds to answer as many open-ended questions about you okay. as you can. It's nerve-wracking, okay. but let's do I it. Know. And I make it sound very competitive, but you're actually not competing <laughs> against That's okay. Anyone I'm competing else. against myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 60 seconds on the clock. On your mark, get set, go. Okay. What season best fits your personality? Oh, fall. Okay. What is your most used emoji in text? The crying, laughing one. Love that one. Uh, what's something about you that surprises people when they first hear it? That I, oh, I don't know, actually. I used to be very shy and not talk a lot. You said that offline yeah. and that shocked me. Uh -huh. Okay. Very interesting. Fill in the blank. I spend too much money on. Oh, random things that I hyper fixate on. Great answer. <laughs> Um, what celebrity would you want to play you in a movie? Oh, I don't really watch anything. I sound boring right now. The can only I, can I nominate one? Yeah, ahead. you can. You no, I thought of Reese Witherspoon. I have no oh idea. My gosh, that would be that's better. I don't know why I, was I thought of her. Kate Hudson. Oh, that's okay. I'll I go like with that. I like Reese that. Reese Witherspoon too. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, what is the? Oh, if you catch me by the fridge at night, I'm probably snacking on what? chips but those aren't in the fridge <laughs> that's okay i love chips still a good answer okay my timer went off that was good okay. you got through many i mean again uh, many not a, not <laughs> you got through <laughs> see the lightning round is a fun way that is to fun end, which i feel like you know end on a positive yeah note. i liked that a celebration well done yeah thanks. all right that's all the okay. time we have for today until next time shine bright everyone